Good morning everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Now one of the most prestigious accomplishments in old school RuneScape is maxing an account. Maxing an account takes thousands of hours and as of February 2021 only 16,000 people have ever done it. But what if, now stay with me for a second here, what if you didn't want to max your account? What if you just wanted to unlock everything in the game, unlock every piece of content, but you didn't care about maxing? Well that's exactly what I want to answer today. How long would it take you to unlock every piece of content in old school RuneScape but not max? Now to clarify here, I don't mean every piece of content in the game because obviously, well the max cape is a piece of content. Being able to smith a rune plate body is a piece of content. But realistically, even Iron Men don't need to smith a rune plate body, you can get it through other means which means you don't really need 99 smithing. So realistically it's more like what total level and how many hours do you need to invest to unlock every useful piece of content. Uh, so obviously this can be a bit subjective and this is just my opinion. Now one extremely useful piece of content that is unlocked at a very high level for a lot of different skills are the Elite Achievement Diaries. These have an extremely useful host of perks that range from nice quality of life changes to extremely important enhancements to existing pieces of content. Now obviously we want to be able to complete every single quest in the entire game, which you will most likely be able to do if you've already completed the Achievement Diaries, but we are going to be accounting for that. Uh, we want to make sure we've unlocked every single PVM monster, every single useful weapon, and just be able to kill anything in the game. We want to be able to burn, craft, fish, smith, anything that is actually going to be useful for an account and not just a weird anomaly at a high level. Now obviously one of the first things we need to determine is, well, how long does it take to max an account in old school? Now that is definitely up for debate, but usually people will quote somewhere between 1500 hours and 2500 hours. Obviously that is a fairly large range, and that's really going to depend on how many of the tick manipulation methods you end up doing. Now for this video I decided to pick somewhere in the middle. This is something I would most likely do myself if I were to start again on a new account. It will make use of most of the quickest training methods, but no tick manipulation, uh, so that will slow you down some. Now once again, I am using the spreadsheet by Vorpal, and after entering all of my custom experience rates, it popped out a time to max at around 2,016 hours. Now obviously the experience rates I put in could be tweaked a bit, but this is mainly just to have a reference point, uh, so we can compare how much time you would save by not maxing all the skills, but getting to a level where you would have unlocked everything that is practical and useful. Okay, so let's start off with one of the big ones, and that is combat. Now, you could make some arguments that you don't actually need a maxed combat, but to keep things simple, the higher combat sets you have, the stronger you are at bosses, which, which means most likely you're going to want to have a max combat. Uh, so there are going to be no changes for attack, strength, defense, range, magic, hit points obviously doesn't matter, and we're even going to go for 99 prayer. Okay, so there are no changes with combat, but now moving on to our next skill, and that is runecrafting. Now, runecrafting is notoriously slow and requires hundreds of hours to get to level 99. However, actually, the very last thing that you unlock with runecrafting, including all of the elite diaries, every potential rune you could craft, is actually wrath runes at level 95. Now, technically, you do also unlock double death runes at level 99, but I don't really think that is a vital unlock for the account. Now, unfortunately, wrath runes are still a fairly high level, which means you're only actually going to save around 65 hours by not maxing the skill, or around 4.2 million experience. Now construction is a really interesting one. Realistically what most people shoot for with construction is level 84. Now at level 84 you can use a stew boost plus the crystal saw to pretty much boost to make anything useful in the POH. You can make the jewelry box, you can make the portal nexus, you can make the rejuvenation pool, pretty much anything you'd ever want you can make at that level. Now that actually saves you around 10 million total experience, but because the construction is so quick that actually only saves you around 11 hours, but it'll also notably save you a lot of money as well. Alright, next up here we have Agility. Now Agility unfortunately has quite a few higher level requirements, including level 90 for the Elite Diary, but more notably level 92 for the final level of the Hallowed Sepulchre. This unlocks the best training method in the game and is a vital unlock for the account, including the Ring of Endurance. Now that said, 92 actually still saves you half of the total experience, which means you're going to still save 90 hours versus if you were to max Agility. The next skill we have here is Herblore. Now Herblore actually has quite a few high level requirements for a few different things. You need up to level 90 to make the overloads in the chambers of Zarek. However, you also need 98 to be able to make an extended super anti-fire 
uh, which does have some uses. However, if you resign yourself to boosting with a botanical pie, which gives you a plus four boost, that means you could probably get away with 94 herblore, which in the end would save you around 13 hours, a fair bit of money and five million experience. Okay, so after that we have a thieving. Now thieving is mainly gated by some of the higher level diaries, now one of the highest level ones is the Desert Elite Diary, which actually requires level 91 thieving. It's an unboostable requirement because it is for Pyramid Plunder. However, only going to level 91 actually saves you over half of the total experience you need to gain for this skill, or around 35 hours, which is pretty substantial. Now you don't save very much time with crafting because while the diaries don't actually have a very high requirement compared to some, unfortunately the Zenite Jewelry has a very high level requirement to craft. The highest level one it requires level 98 crafting, which, which means even if you take advantage of a spicy stew, which gives you a plus five boost, you still need level 93 crafting. Now you could definitely get away with boosting this because you only need the Zenite once, which means for crafting, you could save yourself around 17 hours or around 5.8 million experience. Now fletching does have a few higher level requirements to it, but in the end, the highest level requirement for something that is actually gonna be useful is actually for dragon darts, which actually requires 95 fletching to be able to make. Now even assuming that you take advantage of the dragon fruit pie whenever you want to make dragon darts, which would be a little annoying, only getting to level 91 would only save you around 7 hours just because fletching is so quick. Okay, so next up here we have Slayer. Now Slayer has one end game requirement that is very important unfortunately and at a very high level and that is the alchemical hydra at level 95 Slayer. Uh, Slayer is definitely one of the slowest skills in the game, so even those four levels will actually save you around 85 hours of total game time, or around 4.2 million experience, so a fairly substantial amount. But you can't really get around this because Hydra is part of the Krend Elite Diary, and has too many vital drops to be able to skip. Okay, so next up here we have Hunter. Now Hunter has a couple of higher level requirements, but actually the highest level one that I think is actually still useful is level 89 Hunter for the Redwood Birdhouses. Now technically you do need level 99 Hunter to bare hand catch a Lunky Implane. However, I mean that's pretty rare and you can just bring an Implane net and catch them anyway. So I don't really think that is vital. So if you only go to 89, that will actually save you around 54 hours versus if you went to Max's skill or around 8 million experience. Now next pair we have Mining. Now Mining unfortunately has Amethyst, which is at a very high level of 92 Mining, which and Amethyst is useful, I mean, especially if you're an Ironman. With that said though, you're still gonna save half of the total experience possible, or around 82 hours. Now as for smithing, there are quite a few things that you unlock at around level 90, but if you get 91, you can now do the Ardun Elite Diary. You can also smith a Dragonfire Ward, a dragon fire shield, and a dragon plate body. Now of course there are things above this like the rune plate body for some reason, but there is no realistic reason why you'd ever have to craft a rune plate body or rune scimitar unless you are a free to play ironman, but that of course is a whole different ball game. Now if you only go to 91, you will save yourself around 24 hours, 7 million experience, and a bit of money as well. Now another big one is fishing. Now fishing has one really high level requirement for a diary, and that is the Mauritania Elite Diary that you have to get at 96 fishing for. Now you can use an Admiral Pie at level 91, which I think most people would recommend doing, because that will save you a ton of experience. Now just going for level 91 will save you around 100 hours versus if you max the skill, which is very substantial, and will save you around 7.1 million experience. I think this is actually the highest time save on the list. All right, so next up here we have cooking. Now really you could get away with level 90 cooking to get a plus five boost to get the Varrock Elite Diary. Cooking is pretty quick though. I mean, you wouldn't really necessarily have to practically do that, but to keep it in line with everything else, you could boost just to get the diary. Now, if you are just shooting for level 90 cooking, it'll actually save you around 26 hours versus if you decided to max a skill. Okay, so fire making is a weird one. Well, actually just recently, a reason to level up your fire making into the upper 90s was added with the Shades of Morton minigame. Now you require level 95 fire making now to burn redwood pyre logs, which you can use to get golden keys and open them up in the Shades of Morton minigame. Now you can make arguments whether or not this minigame is even worth doing, but it does have some useful rewards. So I think you can make a good argument to get 95 fire making. Now because of that, you're actually only gonna save around 14 hours off of fire making, which is not very much. All right, for the second last skill here, we have wood cutting. Now the highest level tree you can cut in old school runescape 
is a redwood tree. That's also a requirement for the Karend Elite Diary, which you could theoretically boost for. However, if you want to consistently chop redwoods, which would require you to unlock the content, it's a little more viable just to actually get level 90. Even just stopping at level 90, Woodkiting will actually save you 96 hours versus maxing it, or around 7.6 million experience. And the final skill we have here is Farming, which actually has a very high level unlock at level 99 Farming. Actually probably one of the only skills that has something useful at level 99 beyond the skill cape. At level 99 Farming, you can plant an unlimited amount of spirit trees littered throughout Old School RuneScape. That actually is pretty useful because it unlocks quite a few different teleport locations where previously you'd be limited by one or two. However, with that said, you could theoretically boost with a Garden Pie just to plant them in the ground and then you'd be set forever. However, because farming is so quick in the end, you're actually not going to save very much time at all, only around 4 hours or around 3.3 million experience. So in the end, how much time does that save? Well, our previous time max was around 2000 hours, 2016 to be exact, and after trimming the fat from everything that is not vital, we're not going for max, how many hours did we end up saving? Well, it actually bumped us down to 1200 and 92 hours or saving us around 724 hours. Now that is a time reduction of nearly 40% which is very substantial. Also if you didn't care about wrath runes or amethyst you could save yourself an additional 100 hours more or less. Uh, so 1292 hours what does that really mean? Well it means that you could theoretically have the skill requirements to unlock anything in the game in about one year if you only played around 4 hours a day. No denying that it's still a lot, but it sounds a little bit more reasonable for people who even have, well, other commitments that aren't, uh, well, RuneScape. Anyway guys, before I go here, I want to give a huge thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Timothy Chen, Cappy, Guy Fox, Valhalla Lad, Brian Robinson, Brad Sings, Ocelot, and Kush Patel for all subscribing at the Dragon Tier. Thank you guys so much, I'm literally going to lose my breath trying to say all those at once. Also, another huge thank you to Birdbot, Red Kamikaze, and Base Titch. As always, guys, if you're looking for a way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is a really awesome way to do so. You can become immortalized in my future videos, get access to my video release schedule, and of course, get a custom role in my Discord server. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.